Thank you. I am humbled. Humbled and honored. There's almost no other way to describe it, to describe what I'm feeling right now other than humbled and honored. Governor Little, Lieutenant Governor McGeehan, Dr. Clark, Mr. Westberg, Ms. Atchley, from our Board of Trustees, the State Board of Education, to my colleagues, alumni, family and friends, too numerous to mention in the room today, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. And to all of our students, our students everywhere, thank you. And one last point, Governor Little, thank you. Your presence here supporting our campus as we move forward, it means a lot to me, it means a lot to our campus and our entire community. So thank you for being here today. To be standing in front of all of you right here on this stage in this amazing facility at this fantastic university, it's incredibly humbling. But it's also a testament to what we do as an institution and more importantly, why we do it. I am standing here before you today as a first generation college graduate. And as living proof why what we do matters. In short, why we roar. I often give speeches about leadership and the importance that leadership plays in every level of the university, not at the top, but at every level of the university, and how important that is to moving our university and our mission forward. And one of the leadership tips, one of the concepts that I talk about when I talk about leadership is that for leaders, you can't fake passion. You either do or you do not have passion for our work as a university. Our students are why we are here. Our students come to us to get an education. They come to us to better their lives. They come to us to open up a world for them to experience and learn from and to be a leader at any level of the university. You have to have passion for our why. You have to have passion for this. This is why we roar. 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 why we roar. This is why we roar. This is why we roar. That 
is why we roar. You either are or you are not moved by what you just saw. And every single person who works at the university understands we come to work every day to be a part of that, to make that happen, to make that experience happen for our students. We come to work and we get to come to a university to go to work. We get to be a part of that. We get to be part of having that impact on the lives of our students every day. That is why we roar. <clears throat> Next week at commencement, thanks to our faculty, we are going to recognize over 2,500 students and bestow upon them, in recognition of their hard work in your classes, certificates, associate degrees, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, doctorates, and professional credentials that will enable them to go out in the world and achieve their dreams. That's why you roar. And on the way, between their march through the arch on their first day and when they march across stage at commencement, we are going to give them experiences that will stay with them forever. Experiences like just last month when our graduate students and graduate students from across the state presented their master's thesis and doctoral dissertations in the state's first ever three-minute thesis competition. Imagine spending years researching and writing your thesis or your dissertation, and then having just three minutes to present your findings <laughs> to a judge. I was so proud of our students and their performance at that competition. Those are the kind of experiences our students are having at Idaho State University. And students come to us for our Career Path Internship Program. As many of you know in the audience, this is a fantastic program that provides paid internships for Idaho State University students. So they can go out and not only get practical real world, world experience while they're a student, but they can get paid along the way to help reduce some of the burden of the cost of college. This is a fantastic program. It's a program I talk about wherever I go across the state because not only is it fantastic, but it's one of the things that distinguishes us as a university from other places. Students come here to experience International Night, where they can experience culture from around the world, and it's culture that's provided to them by their peers, by our own international students who provide the programming. Students come here to learn to make the world a better place, like the students from our Sustainability Club, who want to use their education to make a better, more environmentally friendly world for all of our collective futures. And students come here because of our debate team. Now, for those of you who follow our fantastic debate team, you already know this. But for the rest of us, this year, our debate team took their wins to a whole new level. How about national champions? Because it's true, Idaho State University debaters Caden Marchetti and Nate Mortimer, both Pocatello natives, both current political science students, argued their way to the top of the public forum debate in Pi Kappa Delta National Term Tournament held at Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York, our own homegrown national champions. Yeah, that is why we roar. <laughs> now, to make sure that our state and our entire region begins to realize why we roar, last fall, I made you all a promise. Last fall, I made you all a promise, and I said we 
are going to start talking about ourselves and the great things we do. And we're going to start a new brand image and marketing campaign to make sure this state hears our roar. Now, many of you have seen the beginning earlier this month of that campaign, but I want to show you how we are telling our story. I want to show you the first few scenes we are sharing about Idaho State University's story. You're going to miss this. What are you talking about? When you go off to that school. That school is Idaho State, man. Top rated college for skiers in the Mountain West. Pow? Pow, pow. Dude, I'm visiting you. Going for nuclear engineering, not snowboarding. A nuclear engineering degree with a minor in shredding. <laughs> One. Everything's the last this year. Last homecoming, last football game. But you're going to Idaho State to study... Psychology. Someday, you'll need an appointment to see me. So you still get to do this? For another four years. Go Bengals! Rawr. That the best you got? Rawr. 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 Oh. <laughs> Have you decided yet? Yeah. Man, I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> but I guess if you wanna be a physical therapist, Idaho State's kind of the school, huh? Yeah, I wanna do research and I can do that as an undergrad at ISU. I can even help publish papers. I've got another year left, but let me know how it goes. Do you even have what it takes to be a Bengal? Bengals are fast. And they still let you in? Hey. What's that? It's a cop salad. No, I mean that. Oh, he got accepted into Idaho State. Oh. Says he wants to earn his PhD in engineering. Get that? How long is that gonna last? Let me see. You get your undergrad, you do your master's. No. I mean that. Oh. Go Bengals. Go Bengals. Those are the moments when a student decides they're going to become a Bengal and what it means to them. And when that student chooses Idaho State University, they deserve to know that we are all going to be there for them. Because we are here. Faculty, staff, alumni, we're here for that student. We're here for that one student who didn't even give me her name. But she walked up to me at the student organizational fair in the first week of classes. And she walked up to me and she told me she thought she was about to give up. That she wasn't sure if she was gonna continue her education even though she only had one year left. But she walked up to me and she said she wanted to thank me because she had read my email that I sent out to the students on the first day of classes. In that email I had said this. I said, this is a day where possibilities and dreams begin to converge. This is a day for fresh starts and new intentions. This is the day to step forward into your life, to be brave and resilient, to test the limits of what you think you can do. Today is a day to go boldly towards the future you have always imagined. That was the message in my email to our students. She told me, she said, I read the message, and I read it, and that message gave me what I needed to continue. I'm going to push through and get my degree. She thanked me, and she walked away. So I was standing out on the quad, literally tears welling up in my eyes, trying to compose myself, because something I said had made a real impact on her life. And she was going to use that to complete her education and better her life. That is why we roar. Because our students are here for one another. I know it and I've seen it. 
I've seen it in our student body president, Logan Schmidt. Now about a month ago, Logan was walking to class and he saw a person who was visually impaired having trouble navigating a crosswalk on one of the streets or ground campus. Logan jumped in to help. He took the time to help this person get to their destination and he did it while no one was looking. He did it because it was the right thing to do. Except, as it turns out, Logan didn't realize that one of our university employees was actually within earshot and heard the conversation. Just by happenstance, happened to be close enough to hear it. And as Logan walked away helping this person, our employee snapped this candid photo. Student leaders like Logan and our students doing the right thing even when they think no one is looking. That is why we roar. And our students, they're here for our future. Students like Bruce Blair, a first-generation college student, and two weeks ago, Bruce landed a Fulbright scholarship. Yes, our very own Fulbright scholar. He will study nuclear materials repository in Finland. Bruce, Bruce said his mother cried when she heard the news that he got a Fulbright. Bruce is a doctoral student in political science, and he will join a research team for a nine-month appointment in Finland to research the social impacts of nuclear materials repositories because Finland is opening the first such site in the entire world, and we want to know what that means for our society. This is Idaho State University on the national stage because of the actions of our students. That's why we roar. And now I have just one last story to tell. Because I know that sometimes education is just about one kid. And it's that kid from small town Idaho. A fourth generation Idaho native, born and raised here, spent all 12 years in the public school system. That kid who when he was in high school, he asked his mom about getting a job in the lumber mill to maybe make a little bit of money. And his mom said, that it was more important that he focus on his homework and his education. And that in fact, his real job, his real job was to get the grades he needed to get a scholarship because she said to him, you're gonna go to college one day. That kid who ended up being a first generation college graduate, first in his family to get a bachelor's degree. And he got that degree from one of our public state universities here in Idaho. And then he went on to get his graduate degree from one of our other public state universities here in Idaho. And then that kid later spends six years working for the Attorney General, representing the people of the state of Idaho, where he learned phrases like, it's easy to do the right thing when everybody's watching, but the real key is, do you do the right thing when no one is watching? And then after the AG's office, he spent the next 20 years working in Idaho's higher education system, trying to make it better, trying to make a system where all of Idaho's students will have the chance to better their lives through higher education like he did. And then one day, this fourth generation kid from small town Idaho gets named president of Idaho State University. Getting named president of Idaho State University is something that never would have happened if that kid didn't go on and go on to higher education. So yeah, I'm pretty sure what we do in higher education changes lives on an individual level. That kid is living proof. Living proof that what we do here makes a difference. And you know what else I know? I know that kid is not alone. I know, in fact, that kid is represented on our own campus every day by thousands, thousands of other students just like him from small towns all over our state and our region. So we always 
have to remember why we're here. We always have to be in the mode to help students better their lives. And I'm standing up here today to make a commitment to that mission, a commitment that as president, all of my decisions will be with our why in mind, with our students in mind. Our goals to help our students get an education will be the basis for every decision I make in this position of high trust. And I get to do that every day working side by side with a faculty and staff who have demonstrated that they have a steadfast devotion to the concept and the principles of a student-centric education, where dedication to our students, dedication to our why is our calling and I know and have observed that I work where a faculty and staff and leaders of this university are answering that call. So if you are a student and you want an education at a place that understands you, at a place that understands our student-centric mission, that understands our why, that understands why we are here, then you have found your home. You have found your roar. Come join this roar. Roar, bangles, roar. Thank you, Governor. Thank you.